as we've seen too, too often. Unfortunately, it looks like at this stage, this might be the last race meeting at Bibber Lake. Just like to remind you, we're proudly supported by Smoke Free WA here this evening as well. So support that as well, because they've been great supporters of ours over the last three seasons here at Bibber Lake Speedway. We'd like to pass you now over to the president of uh, Bibber Lake Speedway, Jeff Connolly. And Jeff, final evening tonight. How are you feeling? You've been out on the back of a sidecar. A little bit woofy around the back end there, but how's things, mate? Well, pra practice makes perfect, but Fusky is a bit gutless. He wouldn't keep going, but anyway, uh, no, it was a bit of a thrill, and thank you very much for that. But ladies and gentlemen, yes, what a sad day it is for Bripper Lake Speedway. And uh, for those who reckon Speedway is dead, just have a look around here. What we've got here today is just a fantastic piece of machinery, competitors and different types of... Uh, divisions and I think we uh, the public owe everyone out there in the middle a big round of applause. Can we have that please? Speedway's not dead and uh, I think uh, people higher up should have a look at this, our politicians and the powers to be. However it may be the final meeting here today and uh, if it wasn't for the foresight of a lot of uh, life members and a lot of members here over 41 years this fantastic little track wouldn't be here today. Sincerely hope that over that period of time there's many spectators and uh, families had a great deal of enjoyment and satisfaction at this place. I know all the competitors over the years have and uh, everybody just has a good time at this sort of speedway. So get hold of your politicians, bring them up every day of the week and tell them what about speedway and what about Bribber Lake and you never know we may uh, be able to stay here for a bit longer. But once again, over those many years, to all those proud members, life members, all the supporters, the John Days of the world, the Dave Hennings, Neville Risley, there's too many to mention, but uh, and all the officials of each division, and particularly all the competitors that uh, spend a lot of money and a lot of time on their gear, just uh, for their own satisfaction, but also for uh, entertainment for the public. Uh, today, we just hope it's uh, not a full-on race meeting, you can see we've got a lot of entries. We just, it's a fun day to go away with great memories, no injuries from Bribber Lake. And I just in, sincerely thank and trust that all the competitors have a, a fast and safe trip uh, racing meeting today. Can't say much more other than to the public. Thank you very much over a long period of time. To the girls, to everybody that's uh, played a little part of this speedway. It is surely a great track, been a great club. The club shall survive, but the track at this stage is a bit doubtful. The, the Johnny Andersons of the world, the George Higgses, the Jess Adams, the list goes on, Billy Richards, uh, people that were here on day one are still here. It must be a sad day for them because it's a sad day for a lot of other people as well. But once again, just to everybody, thank you very much. Sit back, have a great night's entertainment, and uh, we'll probably catch you at another track. Thanks very much. Now, Janelle, O'Brien, as she has done in the last few fantastic meetings, will sing the national anthem for us tonight. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and willful toil, our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every state of us Australia fare. Sing, oh, but Australia fair. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Janelle O'Brien with the playing of the Australian national anthem. Also. Formula 500 Maltese are out on the raceway. We're about to get them under away for the first time here this evening at Bibber Lake Speedway after 41 years of racing at these little tiny little lake tracks. We're ready to go. Green flag, Simon, Jeff Heddington, goes down into turn one, but race leader out in front will be the 44 car of Billy Richards. 
Good drive. Keep your eye on gates one and two. Oh, the tape's fly up. Whoa! Guy Wilson soars it off the line. Blackland's got the jump. Frank Smart back in second. McKinnon around the outside. Catching hand back there in fourth as they charge through turn. Three and four here. Go to the corner, Blackman's not going to lie down. Frank Smart throws everything home. Hey, look at Blackman. McKinley back there in third race, fans. Catching hand for fourth. Do I walk to the CEO? Oh, he's got the bike going. But have a look at young Blackman. What a tremendous ride. The local man takes on the British League rider. Down the back straight to each charge. Lee Blackman. Frank Smart. Whoa, thank you for the race down here. They go through one and two. One lap left to go. A Brimble race will be right. Come on, race fans. Down the back straight. Put your hands together for them. Catching hand goes a bit wide right down there at the back of the pack. Let's bring Spark right in on the top. Big well stand. Oh, Frank Smart. Lee Blackman. Ken McKinley. Keith McKinley, sorry. And, uh, well, unbelievable stuff. Jason catching hand for Down the back straight. Have a look at this, Frank Smart, just back from many, many years on the British League circuit. Just the four riders out at the moment. Mark Govic out of two. Well, they take off there on bike number six, it is. It's Nigel Roberts who gets a fly around the outside. Of course, Nigel, the former British League speedway rider, moved to Perth and, uh, well, having a bit of a skid here at Fibber Lake Speedway. In the red hole for Tom Lowe, Nigel Roberts, uh, well, Jimmy Nigel Roberts on machine number six it is. Number nine going down the back straight away there is Alan Mitchell. We'll get uh, some clarification on these helmet colours and their uh, actual bike numbers. Yeah, Mark Yobie's back here in third though. Of course, Mark Yobie. A newcomer to the sport of Speedway motorcycle racing and uh, he loves his solos and he's uh, a huge, uh, huge try there. Well, down the back straight in the red is Nigel Roberts. Jovic for third. Have a look at this man back in second with one lap left to go. Triple A Speedway throwing everything at that bike. Bike number nine it is. I think that's Darrell Mitchell in the black. Not number 19 as it appears in your program. Down the back straight they charge. Nigel Roberts in number six in the red helmet colour. In the black. All the green, the Alan Mitchell. Second flag comes out. Put your hands together for them. Jovic just snuck uh, by in second on machine number nine. There was Alan Mitchell uh, picked up in the uh, in the helmet colours and just coming over the line in green and uh, got knocked off a bike when Mark Jovic fell set. Of course, Carly Giddes is a former junior speedway rider. Charlie get us down on the uh, the line there. Back there in the uh, yellow helmet colour is Daniel McVeigh. A newcomer to the solos as they go through the top corner there. McVeigh's out in front, going in nice and easy through the top corner. We want everyone to be uh, going home safely from this meeting here tonight at Fibber Lake Speedway. Back there on bike number 69 is Stephen Murray. But Charlie get us is throwing everything at it. Murray's pulled off. Further back there in the uh, field on the blue helmet colour is Brady Webb. Uh, yeah, another newcomer to the solo, and uh, yes, let's hope it's nice and easy are the novices here this evening. In the yellow, Daniel McVeigh, Carly Giddes back there on bike number nine. Brady Webb goes around the outside. Well, Carly Giddes is very smooth out of the corners, but Brady Webb gets the jump as they go down past the post blue WA sign. One lap left to go from uh, the general John Day, but the man out in front at the moment is Daniel McVeigh. Brady Webb back there in second, and Carly Giddes for third, as they go through one and two for the last time. Daniel McVeigh it is, taking it nice and easy through the uh, turns three and four, and uh, slide down to that top corner for the checkered flag from the general. Put your hands together for him. Brady Webb back there in second, and Carly Giddes for third, and we have the two DNFs there with Denise Cook.
Vince Ciancelli with uh, Justin Winchester on the uh, passengers. There we go. Vince Ciancelli gets away quick. Tony Shields gets a bit of a wheel stand off the start line. But Vince Ciancelli had a turn to and heads down the back straight away from the first line. In behind him is Scott Charlie and Chris Atmauer. And back to uh, Tony Shield and Chris Summerfield as they come out of turn four. Head down the main straight away. And that's the first lap completed on the raceway. Vince Ciancelli and Justin Winchester. Pick the bike down nice and low in turn one. Across the line in second is Tony Shield and Chris Summerfield. And further back in third spot will be the 22 by of Scott Charlesley and Chris Adenauer as they try to sort out a few problems aboard that slight car. Advising they slight car racing straight out of the box here at Bibble Lake Speedway. All set for a start. Dean Morey off gate one. Keep your eye on Dean and John Morey. Very, very competitive. And Pachki Cosenzi on the outside could cause an upset. Well, oh, they're going to the first corner, a little bit of hip and shoulder, but it's Pushkri Kazenzi takes on Dean and John Moy, but Dean and John Moy got the jump. Oh, the red lights are on. Oh, <laughs> well, a bit of first corner punching. A good decision there by the referee. Let's hope they all... Set for a start. Oh, they've cut the tapes. Okay, Pluskri Kazenzi. Oh, look at this. Pluskri Kazenzi came right across then. And, uh, well, Carl Pryor had nowhere to go, but our race leader, have a look at this. Dave Hennings on 99. Darren and Joel Moy out in front by a country mile as they go through three and four. Pluskri Kazenzi now down the inside of Kral. Hey, they're all over one another as they go through turns one and two. Pluskri Kazenzi. Looks a little bit wide there on uh, Carl Prowl, but uh, they sort themselves out as they go past the smoke free WA sign. But have a look at our race leader, Darren and Joel Morey. Very comfortable out in front and uh, doing it very well indeed as they go through one and two. The General John Day steps up to the plate. They'll have one to go when they pass the General this time. But uh, Darren and Joel Morey uh, certainly got the acid on the remainder of the field as they spread out now. Down past the start finish line. Muskri Kuzenzi and the Dean Moore is going through the top corner now and uh, really ringing the neck on that speedway sidecar. Further back in the pack though is our friends Carl Prowl and uh, James Richter having a little bit of a problem, but put your hands together for them. Darren and John Moore take out the win. Muskri Kuzenzi, Dean Moore for second. And a long way back there in third is Carl Prowl and James Richter, who I think have travelled all the way down from Kalgoorlie for this one. Sedans as we go out on the raceway now and Jeff Connolly president going head to head with the 77 of George Street as they head down the back straight away for the first time. Bradley Rose in there for the uh, third spot running but the club president Jeff Connolly leads him out of turn four and down the main straight away down past the start finish line back in second spot will be George Street then we go back to Bradley Rose 
Kevin Park looking up on the inside of Peter Worthington now as they find out for the fourth and fifth spot position. But Jeff Connolly now past the snake three WA side on the back straight away. Set the car for the run through three and four. Great driver at the moment in second spot from the 77 of George Street. He's holding out the uh, 18 car flat. Bradley Rose. <laughs> and then we have uh, Kevin Park in the 80 car. Yeah, send the first aider to the uh, PA box, taking of our own spit at this stage, but Jeff Connolly still out in front as he comes out of uh, turn four and down the lane straight away. Back in second spot is still George Street. Then we go back to Kevin Park, Bradley Rose for fourth. Then we'll head back to the 53 car of Peter Worthington, but race leader Jeff Connolly. Down the back straight away he goes and heads for turn three and four. Big gap back then to the second spot running of uh, George Street there. Kevin Park right up on the back end now as they come out of turn four and head down the main straight away. Chases them down at the bell and a half a second spot on the raceway for the production sedan. Holding on the fourth spot there is Rose Park. Looks to the inside of Street there, side by side out of turn two. They'll charge it down the back straight and drive down into turn three. Park pulls out the uh, run there to pick up the second spot getting. Street tries to get the car back down the way side of the raceway because Bradley Rose is right there trying to find a way around. But I tell you what, Club President Jeff Connolly is running away with this production sedan heat at the moment as he goes down into turn three and four. Kevin Park is there for second spot, Street for third, and Bradley Rose is back there in fourth spot. There's a bit of a gap back to the 53 of Peter Worthington, but a great drive from Jeff Connolly. Under the AB smash repair sign, he turns to and he heads down the back straight away. Can't be too many laps left in this one. Kevin Park still there for second, starting to pull away from uh, George Street and then Bradley Rose. The white flag comes out. One lap left to the middle lake. Speedway circuit for Jeff Connolly. He is out in front and he is looking the good. Down in the turns one and two for the last time. He'll charge down the back straight away. Kevin Park still back there in second spot. Great battle book for third between Street and Bradley Rose. This is going to be on down in uh, turn three and four. But Jeff Connolly, now to turn four, down the main straight away. Picks up the race win. Kevin Park will come home in second. Street and Bradley Rose are going to go head for head to the start finish line. And Bradley Rose, I think, just got it by a nose over uh, George Street, then we'll go back to uh, Craig Higgs and then back to the rest of the field for the production sedans, but the president, Jeff Connolly, pole position. The way past the smoke three signs, should be set for a start very soon. Got a problem here with car number 37 and uh, Tyson Triplett. I guess Tyson, the uh, son of John Triplett. Well, the lights are off, we're set for a start. And Rob Adley gives them the green, but uh, car 16. Vinnie Valentini heads to the front. Back there in car number three, uh, doing it well with Matthew Prunster. Virginia's charged through the uh, turns one and two. Car number 20 now makes his charge and makes his sloop. Up the inside of Matthew Prunster's relegated back there to third. We're also now putting in the challenge that will not uh, quite pick up a number. We will do very shortly as car number 33 it is. In, uh, well, car number 33 may be a late entry. We don't seem to have him down here at, uh, at all, sorry it is, it's, it's Alex McLaughlin and what a charge from young Alex McLaughlin as they round the uh, car there of young Triplett going through turn three and four. Down past the, the fast uh, start finish line they go, number three it is uh, there Matthew Plunster running out of motor and he's moved to the, to the infield. Got the junior sedan action here at Brimble Lake Speedway. Oh, we've got a car just going a little bit wide. There's young Valentini, who uh, at this stage is our a race leader. Back there in second car, number 20 as they charge past us here, Mason Sloot. A long way back to uh, third position, which is car number seven in Jaden Higgs. Further back behind him, car 68, doing it well as Corey Kenny. Uh, charging up onto the, uh, the lap car there in the car number 51 is Katie Spark. Well, Virginia Sedans now, your race leader. Down past the start finish line, they charge. Car number 16, young Valentini, cuts to the, uh, the pack and uh, is uh, doing a tremendous job. Behind him, car number 20, is Mason Sloop.
Valentini gets the white flag as they come past the start finish line here. Mason Sloot behind him in car number 33. And uh, gee, doing a great job as Alex McLaughlin. They're three wide coming through the top corner. But as he comes out of uh, turn three and four, race fans, put your hands together for him as he takes the checkered flag, young Valentini. What a great drive from him. Mason Sloot back there in car 33. Alex McLaughlin. Car number 68 now, Corey Kenny back there in fourth. And at number seven, back in fifth is Jaden Higgs. Welcome. Well, looks like we'll be the uh, 33 of Dave Heddington out there. Ready to let him go. John Anderson's right there as well. And Dave Heddington goes flying around the outside. Bottle will the high side of the racetrack as well. But Heddington leads it down the back straight for the first time. John Anderson back there in second. Bottle on the high side around the outside. Phil Cox there, McKinley right in behind Cox, nearly went up the back end that time around, but Dave Heddington down the back straight away leading John Anderson, J.A. Johnny Anderson, back to our right by the wall, we had a little bit of a coming to the and one car up into the fence, and that looks like it might be Tim Jansen that time around, the yellow painter at River Lake Speedway and the various other circuits around Western Australia as the uh, 4500 line themselves up. We're going to see whether Rob Hadley will give him the green flag. Wayne Racing now goes this front around. Dave Eddington leads it down to turn one. J.A. Johnny Anderson there for second. Pottrell back there for the third spot. Then we go back to Phil Croft and then Brett Jansen are looking up on the inside. We'll leave the 55 of the Kinlay. The Kinlay puts Brett Jansen down the spot. But out in front is still Dave Eddington. Then we go back to uh, Phil Croft. Croft keeps the car down nice and low as he battles to try to pick up the third spot running. Johnny Anderson has got his hands full early, uh, getting a bit of a uh, back in the back of the pack between the nine and his turn out. Brett Jansen is the third spot on the 500. So uh, Dave Heddington still out in front. He is starting to spark up Phil Croft on the inside of uh, Bottrell that time around and picks up the third spot running. He chases down Johnny Anderson. The car is starting to uh, light a bit of flames out the front. So hopefully Dave Eddington isn't having any trouble aboard that car. Johnny Anderson still will be second spot. Still cross there for third back to fourth. And then we've got him. But Dave Eddington down to third one and two. That's why I see that car is starting to uh, shoot a bit of flame out the side pipes there. Hopefully it is A-OK. -okay. Johnny Anderson is going to have his hands full now because still cross is really starting to come out. Dave Eddington on shore is starting to slow down out on the raceway. He's getting a hard to the test. Phil Croft coming up on the J.A. Johnny Anderson for second. He's coming down to the floor. But Dave Eddington will get the race win. across the line of Johnny Then we go back to Phil Croft. Rock Bottrell. Then we go back to the nine car of George Hicks. And it's a battle and a half between brother and sister Brett Jansen and Kim Jansen for the final placing there. And Kim will get the nod ahead of Brett Jansen between... Uh, sharing the, the drive normally with uh, his son Todd, and obviously Todd's taking the back seat tonight. We'll get a start as they come around here now, by some of the raceway here at Victor S. River Lake Speedway. Probably just a couple of the Tim Nelson. Ryan Coombs, what's come on his boot? Jeff Holmes, they charge through one and two. Brian Mullins now starts to make his way through the pack, as does the uh, 71 of Glenn Parsons. But they charge down the back straight away. Connolly's out of front. Ken Nielsen. Uh, that's the little chair right there. And Ken Stanley coming into the back there. Brian Mullins. Drives on fire. Jeff Holmes. Car 71. Grant Parsons. Louis Ball was there. And uh, Young Anderson. The track's, uh, the track's in great shape as they go down past the most three time. But Connolly's a great leader. Ken Nielsen. Back in second. Brian Mullins now starts to make his second spot. The battle now between 93, uh, Jeff Holmes and, uh, and uh, Brian Coombs as they come to the uh, bottom corner. George Morgan now, he's starting to make his way through the pack. And we've got a car gone sideways. That's Brian Murray. Well, something good on uh, the car of Brian Murray. Start 
this time. And Gavin uh, Conley will lead them away. Ken Nielsen now back in second. Brian Coombs, Brian Coombs charging through there. And we've still got green light. Coombs. Back there and, uh, 93 Jeff Holmes is there, Billy Broadwood. Further back in the pack there, Glenn Parsons. Shane Henderson drifts wide. Gavin Connolly's still your right three to each set two lengths ahead. That's Tim Nielsen. Another three lengths. Back to Shane. Brian Coombs. Bill Broadwood now starting to make a pass on Jeff Owens. Bill Broadwood almost sideways at the front of the smoke for a WA sign. The last is kicking by here for the former pass. Broadwood now still trying to look for a pass. Car slowing down on the back straight there. It's uh, car number 71, Ben Parsons. He's got some uh, sort of problem with the front end of that car. I think the, uh, the wind has collapsed. The raceway. Conley though, still your race leader. Ken Nielsen. Brian Coombs now. Goes around the outside of that starting race car. Toby brings it in for the checkered flag this time. Put your hands together for Gavin Conley. Kenny Nielsen for second. Coombs back there in third. Crossed the line in uh, fourth was Holmes. Billy Broadwood may have just snuck through there.